Hey, what's up? It's Mia. I'm here with the Noah and Chandler from The Help. So, how are you guys liking South By? Is it your first time? Uh, it's Chandler's first time. It is my first time at South by Southwest. Um, we don't really have an opinion so far on this trip because we've only been here for about two and a half hours. We've only seen the sauna and the pool. Okay. Um, How long is this interview? Not. I'm not yeah. trying to, because I can tell a story or I could just say I don't have an opinion. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 say your story. Uh, I came in 2016 and I didn't know anybody, not from the internet or anywhere, but I came to South by trying to network and I got taken in by Gabe Uzi, like Uzi Gabe, like he makes music. He's kind of a legend in the scene. He just saw me at a party and was like, you're with me now. And then he took me like backstage with ASAP Rocky and all the, I was like bowling with YG and Wiz Khalifa. And I had, I was, I was living, yeah, I was like living, I was living in Colorado at the time. So I had never come across anything like that. So it honestly kind of changed my life. Shouts out Gabe. And um, yeah, so oh, that, that, that was my South by experience. And I was couch surfing with two irreprehensible figures that were a little bit south of the river and I thought I got AIDS from staying there. Not that they were gay or straight, that doesn't matter. Just like, it was so filthy. I just thought there was something growing or metastasizing and yeah, but, uh, oh, I'm banned from the Whole Foods, the headquarters, because I stole, I stole hot food there. Wait, did they catch you? Yeah, and they called the cops, but then I was like being very cool about it, I guess. And he's like, all right, well, we're not gonna, you're not like, you could just leave now. And so I'm banned from the, the one with the ice skating rink on the top or whatever. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway. All right, well, that's kind of crazy. So, some basic questions for any first-time listeners. What is the help? How would you describe your music and the genre you fit into? We're not indie sleaze. Um, it just, it's on, on a real note, it's unfortunate that people kind of think of us as that because we've been doing this long before that was a commodifiable term. And now that it exists as a genre, it's easy to place anybody who's making some sort of electronic music and are thin-ish kind of, depending on the day, thin guys or girls or whatever. <laughs> um, but we're just not that. I don't, I don't really know. We just have specific influences and then kind of go from there. But it was never, and obviously we love like that electro clash kind of era but i don't think that's the driving or motivating factor in our in our music i think we're i don't know what i'd say i'd say probably like alternative you know like like by the by the book it's alternative music for sure um but i don't know the genre is always kind of modulating we've definitely put out songs that sound like fucking uh, what's the band with Kurt Cobain? It's just American Nirvana. Music. It's yeah. Ama it's America music. American music. That's, what, that's really what it is. I'm try we're trying to do like this folk kind of approach to it, where it's like working class. Like think about a song like SSX. It's so country and folk genre oriented vocally over you know very large like m83 landscape synthesizers which is why i like it like even filming in here because it feels like a landscape but you're internalized it's kind of the always the vibe like america big landscapes big sky strong feelings okay america's your vibe i mean it's not necessarily like a patriotic vibe or not it's just the idea of the crumbling manifest destiny transposed into music but not really thinking too hard about that just the i just the grandiose idea of what america is or is not now but i do love like the initial core values that america brought along and like at least the the larp of family and god and country that's like a very cool three three-tier system to live by as opposed to being like a fucking agnostic or like whatever like i'm shouts out to anybody who's an atheist but not not shout out to you but i don't know it's like it's, it's just cool core tenets to live by, I feel like. Even if you don't believe in it, it's still something to admire. Like, I admire I admire Buddhists. I don't believe in anything they're practicing, but I think it's very interesting and a very cool way to live. So, it's, anyway, genre. Um, well, I mean, I would say, like, expand upon that. It's, like, just now coming to my head, it's, like, you know, you have countries like China or Russia, which are much larger than America, but when you think about those countries, the first thing that comes that doesn't come to your mind isn't sprawling large giant you know you think america you think fucking the biggest shit you've ever seen you know what i mean you think texas. yeah texas man texas you think Not texas uh, <laughs> no, we can't no we love we love texas it's the best fucking state in america so I'm sure you guys get asked a lot, like what musical influences you guys have, but I wanted to ask what unconventional influences have shaped your aesthetic, like anyone or anything like the fans wouldn't expect. 
was this Airbnb commercial that was only a YouTube ad commercial. It's th- like a 30 second spot. It was never aired on television, but it's so brilliant. It's so sick. It's so beautiful. I don't even want to tell people about it. It's so good. Keeping the Airbnb commercial. It's so, but it's like, <clears throat> it like fla- it, it just flashes imagery. Like it's like a, it's a, it's a dial tone. It's like, or like when you call somebody and a, an image is flash with it. It's not, it's so it's like people on vacation, black, different photo on vacation. And then like it's just it's like mo- it's like white millennials on vacation in Barbados or some shit like it's a perfect Airbnb target market like it just they have like the little Silicon Valley like tech inspector glasses on like and they're swimming in like the ocean it's brilliant and, like it's low budget and it really it's like eerie it feels like a horror movie because that's what we're living in we're literally living in like this almost like post-apocalyptic symposium of America, but like you're taking a vacation from it, but you still can't escape it. And that's the score, the most familiar thing like any of us can think of. And it's 30 second spot. And then it like ends with like this really beautiful 3D rendering of like the Airbnb app. And like that's when the beep for the voicemail happens. It's genius. It makes me wish I can only direct commercials. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And uh, everyone should watch it. I don't know, just type an Airbnb commercial. <laughs> I'll check it out, I guess. Did you? Um, I would say the first Halo game, uh, Halo Combat Evolved. Um, I remember the first time I played that shit, like um, specifically the second mission when you, you you pop out of the escape pod. And it was the first time I, I'd ever played a first-person shooter. Like, that was not popular at the time. Because before that, it was like you had, like, Doom on the PC, you know, two-dimensional graphics, you know, and, and Halo... I don't know. There, there's just a feeling that it had, like we're talking about, like America. It was just, it was large. It was sprawling. It was, it was. I had never. I didn't even believe you can make video games that felt that large and that, you know, different, that new. And uh, I would say with music, that's the only thing that inspires me. Is just that feel. I'm trying to reclaim the feeling I got when I had Halo One for the first time when I was like seven years old. It's the only feeling I'm looking for. That or when I had Halo Three, when I was uh, in middle school. So yeah, I would say I would say unconventionally, I would say Halo is okay. the biggest inspiration. I'm trying to reclaim that feeling at all Beautiful. times. Well, there's just nothing else that's ever given me that. It's been that Lord of the Rings and Blade Runner 2049 are the only things that have ever really like struck a chord with me. Really, everything else I don't really give a f- shit about. I don't know. Okay. I'd say, but yeah, no, I would say Halo is akin to what we were talking about with America earlier, which is like sprawling landscape, large, like just being completely blown away by the size of something. You know what I mean? monolithic multimedia artists how does one like art form influence another one you do like let's say your visual work and your music for example would you say they influence each other at all well i mean i guess for me specifically like with photography right now i'm really in this era of restraint like such high levels of restraint that things can be misconstrued to the normal person as being like just a shitty photo or like not good almost amateur like such restraint that it almost feels like you're going backwards but really you're standing still the carriage isn't moving forward or backwards you're just really indulging in that moment so like an idea we would have i might have two years ago will not work now like that might be more bombastic or like we did the little enemy tour new york la thing like a year and a half ago and like I had some like Craigslist type extras on stage kind of recreating some of the music video ideas that we would have on stage and I would never do that now it's too much mm-hmm. people are trying to do too much now and like photographically I'm not d- dealing with like very rich tonality and like that Stephen Mycel Vogue era anymore that you I was trying to kind of go after a little bit and I used to have more much like uh, I used to be artistically I wanted to do that more but now it's highly restrained soccer mom imagery very bland like I, my whole thing is like what would a soccer mom if she took the best photo of her life that's what i'm trying to duplicate every time you're like wow mom how did you take that like with your little camera like that's what i want still professional but like this intrinsically perfect moment of the in-between so transposing that to music it's the same thing S- really simple because right now we're in this age of overproduction and hyper production even though i really like like the hyper pop scene or like the soundcloud people i really like that stuff and honestly that's been a very inspiring scene to just be a, not even adjacent to but just like to exist at the same time as but really a lot of restraint and that goes into what we wear and everything else like you know it's the same outfit every day even if I look like shit like I'd even do now I just won't change like that has to be restraint repetition and truly at least indulging in who you are for better or for worse in that moment and then ubiquitously 
pushing that on everything else in your life, even if you die over it or not. Like you have to stand for something, you know, not just go with the trend, I think, but I don't know. Um, this seems like be a similar theme between like soccer mom and like low budget Airbnb commercial and then like family. I don't know. It's very, I, I see like us, like a, it goes full circle, I would say. I think I just like family because I don't think I'm ever going to have a family. I would love one. I would love a wife and I would love kids. That's all I want. But I chose one path in life and I made a lot of sacrifices and dedicated myself to a specific thing to be this guy for better, for worse. And you can't just jump over to the other path. Like I really would love a wife. I would, I dream about it all the time. I, I would love it, but I just don't think it, it can happen because I chose one way and it is what it is. So yeah, it's kind of that grass is greener over there so it's very inspiring like the ssx video where it's just like my family history sort of and anybody can relate to that or you know the things we were already talking about like you're making these conclusions of like family you know of that sort of thing but no i, I uh to, to the effect of what he was he was talking about it's like i would say the crossover between any type of media that we're exploring or project it's just it's just timelessness really i think that's like the only thing we can call it as like we're into denim and leather and just like no logos and we kind of approach that like on enemy like enemy is very restrained you know like and i don't know same thing he's doing with his photography but i would say to add on to that i would say speed everything has to feel fast not not necessarily making a fast song but like if you look at both of us right now we look like we're going kind of fast you know what i mean like we're not you like not this isn't a bad thing like you're going about 45 in a Prius and me and homeboy are in a Porsche going fucking 90. You know what I mean? Like, you know I'm going 45 on cause you got a button on, you look nice and you look relaxed. We don't look relaxed. We look like, you know, we look like we're about to fucking make something. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but no, in a, in a, in a, in a world of like overstimulation and, and just absolute like, uh, yeah, just overstimulation. The only thing, the best, smartest thing you can do is just restrain yourself. You know what I mean? That say say as, l l uh, as least as possible. Is that how you would say that sentence? Say as least as po say as less as possible. Say as say the least amount of words possible is the only way you can do it. It's funny you say the word restraint because I feel like your arts f would be liberating, even or like a liberating act. Personally, or I don't know. It, it's destructive. At least for me, I don't know. It, like it's the worst thing I've ever done in my life. Like. <laughs> I get no pleasure out of it. It ruins everything that I have, and but everybody has their own cross, you know. And just choose, you choose what cross you carry in this life. And some of us have to be have to be Job. Some of us have to be Pontius Pilate. Some of us have to be. Some of us have to pretend we're Jesus. You know what I mean? And some of us can not be any of that. And that's and they're all vital roles. And not not one is better than the other. We're all part of one body, you know what I mean? Wait, I wanted to ask something, like, in regards to your look, how do you feel about, like, this wave of fans, I would say, try to imitate your look, try to imitate your vibe and your aesthetic? Do you like the role as someone, like, I'm trying to stray away from the word influencer, we don't but... Have, we don't have fans and no one dresses like us. No you'd be surprised. I, 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 feel like I, I feel like I see a wave of it. Do, uh, do you notice it? Uh, yes, we notice it. Um... No, I would say I would say honestly, like out of all out of all the things you could be influenced by right now or or want to imitate, I would say this is probably the fucking best thing ever. I, I was saying this to Noah recently. It's like there's right now, if we were to quit tomorrow, we die in a fucking plane crash. The help's over. At the very least, there's a whole generation of kids whose lives will be on a completely different trajectory because they learned how to wear leather jackets correctly from watching us on Instagram and seeing us live and seeing music videos. You know what I mean? Like being able to successfully wear a leather jacket will afford you opportunities in life that you wouldn't otherwise have. And that's like a cold, hard fact. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, you know, back in, back in my hometown, I was like the fucking, <laughs> this is terrible. Back when I was like 19 and shit like that, like I had a leather jacket and everybody was like, oh my God, he's the fucking cool rock star dude. And it just afforded me so many opportunities in my hometown, which were worthless, by the way. Absolutely worthless. All it did was just get me involved in with like 40 year old dudes who knew my mom who like did cocaine and shit like that. Like it didn't really get me anywhere good. But I would say that it's a, we're, we're probably the coolest guys you could be imitating, honestly, or want to look like everybody else looks fucking ridiculous now you know everyone looks like a fucking cartoon character you know and even the even the cool fashion people like the fuck are they wearing fucking baggy balenciaga jeans you know what i mean like nobody looks good anymore nothing is sexy nothing is chic everything is fucking like some 90s 
LARP that is everything just looks fucking ugly now and we don't want we don't want to be that we want to be sleek and sexy and cool and have cool haircuts i don't know do you feel the same that you're the coolest person to imitate right now uh unfortunately he's right like it's not even it 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 really is unfortunate because i always i've said this like six times in the past couple months uh to random people but it's just really sad state of music and the industry when we are kind of the coolest band right now. It's it, like we are. It just is what it is. Like, and I don't even think that's that's not me feeling good about myself saying that. It really feels shameful to know that because in the mid thousands we would not be. In the nineties we would not. Any other time in history we'd be like such not main character. Not we're not even main character now, but like we would be not even on the map. But we are now because the state of everything of culture is just is is very pitiful for sure. Last question, what can fans expect from The Help in the upcoming months? Um, all right, I, yeah, I won't make a joke. Um, <laughs> uh, that's what you, th everybody thinks we're joking all the time. I did this, I gave this speech at Otis recently, Fine Arts College in LA, and the first question was, was that ironic? Are you fucking kidding me? Everything I say is spoken with the most earnestness possible. Like, I'm never joking. Even when I'm joking, it's just I'm too ashamed to actually not smile about it. Like, it is what it is. I, there was not one joke in this interview, and it is what it is. But um, what's happening? We're on Atlantic Records. Um, we're releasing two singles. We are releasing an EP. And um, it's pop music, but it's a little different than what we've done, but it's, I think it's probably our best stuff yet. And um, yeah, I don't know, we're, we're doing the Atlantic Records bit and we're trying to ride out this era in the best way possible. A couple videos, a couple tricks up our sleeve, I guess, and trying to stay alive every day. That's exciting. California Dream Girl, 2023. Colorado, 2023. I don't know what the EP's called, but 2023. <laughs> Hot fun, yeah. It's uh, it'll. I think uh, I don't know if people like it or not, but I don't know. I'm sure it'll be great. Tired of being in a band, so we have to end it in the right way. Whether ending it means five years from now or t t right now, then you know, whenever the the time strikes. But you know, we put a lot of work into it, and not that hard work merits anything, but a lot of people put a lot of work into designing this table. But who gives a fuck, you know? Um, but hopefully, it will strike a cultural chord. And if it doesn't, then we failed, you know? All music is supposed to do is move the cultural barometer. And if we don't do that, then we're worthless. Because at the end of the day, we're not Tchaikovsky. You know, we're not making beautiful, really beautiful music. We're just making a reflective simulacrums of the reality we want to portray. And we want to make people, one, understand that. And two, everybody should be wearing leather jackets and tight jeans. And if we can't do at least some of that, then, you know, we failed miserably. And then Chandler's going to go to college. and. I'm going to work at Walgreens.